I wanted to bring you an update on an amazing result in the Irish referendum. So the Irish government had wanted to push through a change to both the 39th Amendment of the Constitution and the 40th Amendment of the Constitution. The 39th talks about family and ties family to marriage and defines marriage in a conventional way between a man and a woman. And the government had wanted to push through changes to this wording so that family could be whatever you decide it to be. Marriage can be between you and your letterbox if you choose it to be kind of watering down the concept of family and certainly watering down what marriage is recognised to be in its primary sense. Um, and a resounding no vote. I just wanted to get the right percentage to share with you, but uh, it was one of the largest turnout that they've had for a long time. And it was a complete pummeling of the government by the people. Um, so Donegal was particularly high. Proposals to alter the wording to the constitution on marriage were defeated with 67.7% voting no. Then, and in, in other places like Donegal, that went up to, I think, 80 or 82% voting no. Then there was a referendum on the 40th Amendment with regards to care. Now, forgive my English um, translation of this, but it was such that there was a protection in the Constitution for the role of a mother and that the mother should not be placed under undue financial duress and therefore be forced to go out into the workplace over her primary duty of care as a mother to her child. That was the 40th Amendment. Again, the government wanted to force through a watering down of this so that mother in a sense, was no longer protected. The word mother no longer really had any weight to it. Mother was going to be replaced with carer and anybody could be a carer and removing so that the carer could choose to do what they want with their life. Essentially, the stuff we've seen over and over, which really takes away a woman's role or a woman's choice about a role or even the very definition of what a woman is. And excitingly enough, um, people came out in huge numbers, over 40% turnout, which is a lot for a referendum, as you'll know, and voted no. There are interesting points in this that aren't being talked about more widely. Most people are just getting as far as it's a no vote and therefore the government took a pummeling. But there's some other points here that I think are really important. Number one is something that I love the very most, which is an instinct not to trust what you're being told. And to me, this has come about due to the COVID lies and the lockdown lies and us being told things that were clearly not true. And I know this for certain in a certain group of people that I spend a lot of time with, that I'm on the road with, that I perform in front of. We now have an instinctive built in sense of no, sorry, no, no, I don't believe you. And I believe that's what this referendum has also been about. People's instinct, especially when it came to subject to do with family or marriage or women, people's initial reaction to being told we need to change something is no, no, sorry, no. And that's not being talked about. A gut instinct not to trust what you're being told by someone in a position of authority or government, or in my case, you know, I extend that out. I would, wouldn't trust someone, a policeman telling me something. I wouldn't trust a lawyer telling me something. I don't trust the medical profession telling me something. These are my personal views that I know are shared by others. But, but this is an instinctual reaction of people saying, no, you want to change something that we've had for ages that protects our mother, talks about women, talks about marriage. Gut says no, that. The second thing is 23 million euros, 23 million euros wasted on this referendum. And again, top level, it's a waste of money, could have been better spent. But 23 million, the Irish government were able to find just like that 
to try and push through something that chimes very neatly with all the stuff that's being pushed down at the global level. So all the stuff that's coming out of the World Economic Forum, all the stuff about, you know, women don't matter, women don't really exist, dilute everything, make everyone belong to nothing, make marriage invalid, make women invalid, make having a child not that important, make anyone a carer. All this dilution of stuff we hold on to or believe in comes from a global level and all of a sudden 23 million euros was available for that. And then the most important thing that I wanted to say was how clearly this evidence is how far government are from the people. And I don't just mean the lazy stuff in the news or the mainstream. It's like government out of touch, Leo Vradka out of touch, Sinn Féin out of touch. It's not that. It's that I don't think people woke up one morning and thought, do you know, I really think we need a change to the 39th Amendment and the wording in the 40th Amendment. I, I really feel like that's my priority today. When it costs 20 euros to buy a box of Weetabix and we have blocks of cheese that have security tags on them and most people can't afford to do a regular shop anymore because everything's too expensive. Just as an idea of one thing we might be worrying about before you start on anything else. Do you think then people, those same people are waking up thinking, I really would feel better about my life if we changed the wording of the 39th Amendment? Of course they're not. It's not that government are out of touch with people. It is that they are operating on behalf of a far greater power than the people. And we are being shoved stuff down our throat that we don't need. That's very, very divisive. At a time when the last thing you need is division. And ask yourself, where does this divisiveness always come from? Because so rare, I can't think of examples where it comes from inside people. It is a manipulation to divide us. It is pushed down upon us. And government, frankly, I don't see the point of voting for anyone because I believe democracy is at best an illusion. And I think in truth, voting and democracy is just another tool of control because you think you had a vote because you imagine that your vote matters, you are there able, then able to be controlled. But overall, brilliant news. Thank you so much. Thank you to everybody who voted. No, I just I say that just because of the it's such an uplift and an inspiration to others of us, Americans, South Africans, Australians, you know, little me sat here. Uh, that's just glorious. It made my day when I when I heard the results. I just I was just like, thank you, Donegal, thank you. Um, but mostly, you know, I love this sense that I I feel I can feel it when I'm out and about doing what I do. I can feel that instinctively, people no longer trust anything they're being told, and in particular, if you're wearing a uniform or you have a stethoscope, or a badge, or a lanyard, or something that says government, instinctively, immediately, our first reaction is no. So, great news. Thank you. Thank you, Ireland. Mm. Go, you good people, go. <laughs>